In a health alert this morning, new data shows portions of the Mid-South have some of the highest prevalence of Alzheimer's disease among African Americans in this country. Health experts say Alzheimer's is the fourth leading cause of death for older black Americans. To understand what that means for present and future patients and their families, who are live this morning with Stephanie Monroe, Executive Director of African Americans Against Alzheimer's. Ms. Monroe, thank you for joining us this morning on Live at Nine. Good to see you. We understand yeah. that three can congressional districts, especially in Tennessee, are heavily impacted by this, especially when it comes to African Americans. Any idea of why it's so prevalent? Um, well, thanks again for having me. Um, Alzheimer's disease is a huge issue across the country. Um, we've been able to identify, though, areas where there's high um, prevalence of Alzheimer's in Tennessee. Um, that's congressional districts four, seven, and eight, which is the southern and middle and western part of, of Tennessee. Um, in Tennessee in particular, um, there are currently about 120,000 people living with Alzheimer's, and by 2025, that's projected to increase to 140,000. Um, nationwide, we've got 6.2 million people with Alzheimer's, and about 20% um, percent of those people are um, African Americans and Latinas. So um, it's a huge issue. Um, we understand that there are you know, public health issues, um, comorbidities, um, lack of education, opportunities, um, lack of access to good quality health care, um, prevention strategies and things of that nature. Um, it's a systemic problem. And we find that um, when individuals go um, for a checkup, if they have memory concerns, um, even when the doctor has made a determination that they may have um, the kind of cognitive decline that warrants um, additional um, consideration, um, and they make an Alzheimer's diagnosis, 40% of the time they don't share that diagnosis with patients. Um, and so we've got some real problems and some issues and, and challenges ahead of us, but we're beginning to see um, people take better attention to this and understanding that brain health is something that we need to be considering really as a lifespan issue from birth through um, a healthy aging process. You have me wondering, uh, Ms. Monroe, uh, is it more is it perhaps left up more to the individual or should government step in more to kind of deal with so many of these disparities that you just addressed? Yeah, I would say there definitely uh, are opportunities for individuals to, to help themselves and risk modification um, to uh, look at their obesity, um, smoking, alcohol consumption, staying socially active, et cetera, in terms of modifying their risk for Alzheimer's. We see Alzheimer's in people who have diabetes, heart disease, um, things of that nature. But the government has a huge role to play here. Our investments are way under what they need to be both in research, but I, we, we're seeing now more in public health infrastructure. So making sure that we are equipping um, physicians and communities where patients actually want to go, mm. um, which may not necessarily be huge academic centers that are really hard to navigate. Using the public health system, community health centers and others, making sure that they are equipped, that they are culturally relevant in terms of their messaging, mm -hmm. um, that they communicate well with, um, with their patients um, in ways that can really be understood and implemented. So there's a big challenge, but government absolutely has a huge part to play in this. As we unfortunately <laughs> see some of these numbers grow, uh, a lot of people may also look back in the past year or past 18 months dealing with a pandemic. Did that only make this problem worse for many Alzheimer's patients out there and their families? It made it worse, absolutely. Um, caregiver stress, um, loss of services that were being brought in to families who were shut in, um, caregivers um, not being tested. We just saw it a couple of days ago, the government finally require that nursing home staff have to be vaccinated. Um, that was huge. Um, there was a lot of transmission of disease um, to these very vulnerable um, populations because of the lack of the social distancing, the wearing of masks, and now people um, being hesitant and not required to take a vaccine in order to interact with um, nursing home staff. So it's coming along, um, but we certainly are not anywhere near where we need to be, especially when we look at the growth of the aging population. Um, by 2030, we're projecting that 40% of people with Alzheimer's in the country will actually be Latinos or Black, and that cannot continue. So we have an opportunity now to put boots on the ground to make sure that we are prepared 
um, that we are um, using strategies to help people mitigate their risk, but also that we are providing them um, early diagnosis and treatment um, opportunities. Um, Us Against Alzheimer's, which um, is the organization that the African American Network is part of, has um, created an online tool that's free to people. It's called Brain Guide. It can be accessed through mybrainguide.org or 1-855-BRAIN-411. Um, you can go onto there for free, uh, take a memory questionnaire, um, and as a result of that questionnaire, you'll be directed to resources um, that will meet you where you are, help you understand where your um, brain health is, and then connect you to lo- local resources. So we're doing our part to make sure that people, even if they don't have access to a health provider, at least can take this one important good step um, and then hand the, these results over to um, to their doctor and after they'll, they're encouraged to seek medical treatment. Okay. Early diagnosis is the key. Sure. Let's hope we hope uh, everybody does their part as well. Stephanie Monroe, thank you very much for your time. Good to see you this morning. Thank you very much. All right. Zanetta, back to you.